a CSS framework can complement the design of your website, whether it's Elementor, Classic WordPress, or any other page builder. We've got a H1 heading on screen. You can see it's got the H1 tag, and we've got three H2 tags as well. Because I'm gonna show you how you may wanna broaden your mindset as to how you're applying a bit of CSS styling. So let's say we're gonna add in a core framework. So I'm gonna go over to my site settings in Elementor. Now, rather than me adding in the style into each widget, I've gone and said that all of my H1s are three REM and one EM line height. And every time I add in a H2, it also goes to two REM. And you can do this for H3, H4, all the way to H6. And you can go and stick a P in there if you want to apply it to your text editors. And you could add in your colors, you know, whether it's a global color or a custom color. We've done videos on that. Go and check it out because we've got a few brilliant code snippets too. But you can kind of control a lot of what's happening. So every time you add on some text and you then go and say that's a text editor or that's a H3, it will go and apply your particular style. And it means that working on a website can be super, super quick and easy. However, let's say this was one of your pages right now. And you got a H1 heading, maybe it's in your hero banner. And then you got three other H2s on the same page. And it might be one's at the top, one's at the bottom, and there's one right near the bottom. The problem with using this kind of CSS framework is that it will now apply to REM to all of them unless you go in and overwrite it. So you would go into the style for this particular widget and you may then say 1.5 REM. By the way, if anyone is still unsure of REM, for example, of Elementor, one REM is equal to 16 pixels. So two REM is gonna be 32 pixels. I'm sure you're getting very used to understanding REMs because I'm using them more and more in the videos. So let's say you've got a page, right? And you've got three H2 headings on your page. They're all the same size but you don't want that and rather than you overwriting like I just said you want to have it within sort of like your CSS framework or well, rather than you doing this kind of style I want you to think out the box so I'm going to get rid of this and you'll see the styles will all now go back to like a standard size and I want you to use this instead a copy of this code will be in the video description so rather than me just applying a style to H1 and then to H2, I'm saying I don't care if you're a H1, a H6 or a paragraph, you know, in the text editor. I want you to always be a 3REM and 1EM. And of look, you could add in the color. I've commented it out just to show you how simple and easy it is when the class is dot X large. In fact, it should be X large dot is the bit you put in when you do this CSS. And then I've gone and created another style. This one is for large. And I've now said you will be two REM. I could have one for medium. I could have one for small, extra small. I could have one that's called footer text. So it doesn't have to be like large and extra large. You could even have button text if you want. And you have a particular style for that. So you don't have to always use X large and all of that. So let me now show you what I mean. I'm going to go and add in a third one. I'm going to call this one medium and we're going to set this one to be one REM. And what's really cool about writing it in this way by using the is syntax, it means that I don't care what you are in here. If you fall within there, so in a way, I do care what you are rather than me saying I don't care what you are. But if you fall within the brackets and your class name for that widget is medium, you will now be one REM. Let's just go and hit save changes. Let's go back to our text. Let's go to the H1 heading. I'm going to go to the advanced tab and where we have the class name, I'm going to type in large. Did you notice the size of that shrunk down? Let me just get rid of that. That's what it looks like from standard. That is now large. Let's go to this H2 heading and we're going to call this one X large. Look at the change. Let's go to this H2 heading and I'm going to call this one medium. How easy was that for me to apply different styling via the class name? And if you haven't seen our other videos, you can have as many class names as you want in here. Of course, you can't do medium space large because, well, you've got two sizes going on there. But if you've got another bit of CSS, which is now for the color. So let's say you've gone and written some CSS for red or maybe a gradient color. And it's got some code in there for a particular type of gradient. You might go and type in something like red green. Maybe that's what you've put in your custom CSS. So then it would apply that to that heading without you having to go and pop in different bits of code because you control it all in one place. So if you suddenly now switch your red green to be red blue, but you don't wanna to have to go and change the name for everything, 
you just change it once in your custom CSS and it will apply. I'm just going to get rid of the red green. And just to reiterate my point, this one over here is currently set to be medium. I'm going to go and set this to be 10 REM and look, it will apply it regardless of the fact that that is a H2 heading. Because when you have H1, H2, H3, H4 and all of that, you might want to be applying different sizes based on what the functionality of that particular heading is on your page or what the message is that you're trying to get across. I hope that gets you to think a little bit differently. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. See you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings.